church, officials make a lot of money off the church. Didn't they used to sell tickets into heaven? Am I correct or incorrect? You're right, that happened. Mm -hmm. Do you think those are the dudes who wrote the Gospels? Nope. What happened to the guys who wrote the Gospels? Did they get tickets and get money and get drive BMWs? What happened to them, sir, historically? What happened to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, James, Simon the Zealot, Thaddeus, Bartholomew? What happened to those guys? You tell me. They all got killed for their insistence that they saw Jesus risen from the dead. So, you see, that's why I'm asking you, sir. Why are you credible? So you've got to be very careful the way you answer that question, right? I mean, what determines credibility? First of all, you better get the facts right. And the facts are that all the guys in the first century who wrote the Gospels, who wrote the letters that we have in the New Testament, they didn't earn a dime. They didn't get any power. They had no popularity. Instead, they all got crucified or stoned or sawed in two, put to death for what they claim to have seen. You got to study elites too, Freemasonry, things like this. Elites are terrified of the Bible. If you sign certain contracts in Hollywood, you can be Muslim, say Allah, say Krishna, Buddha, because you're saying all religions are the same, but you can't say Jesus. Musicians come out saying this, you have to sign contracts, and Freemasonry, man, uh, they're terrified of Jesus Christ and they will never promote him. The reason for this, man, I mean, you think of elites, but think of Hollywood media. What is it anti? It's not anti-Buddha, it's not anti-Muhammad, it's anti-Jesus Christ. Lil Nas X, do this, A, B, C, D. Jesus Christ is not a religion, he's the only one who has the true power to save you. So it's not even a religion, it's, it's, it's the way of life. All other religions either acknowledge Jesus, accept him as a prophet, and you know what Jesus says? Kick rocks, I'm the only way. Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 54. It says that he is the best of all deceivers. The Arabic phrase is khayrul mm makirin. -hmm. That word makir is a shyster, a conniver, mm -hmm. a trickster, a deceiver. There is no way that a Christian could ever say of his God that his God is the best of all deceivers. Because according to the Bible, that's a description of Satan, not the God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. For Allah to say that he's the best of all deceivers, that means that the Allah of Muhammad is actually Satan in disguise. Because the Bible says Satan is the one who deceives the whole world, not the God revealed in Jesus Christ. For years I prayed to Allah, we used to go to mosque and beat ourselves, we go to the shrines of these Imams and begging and praying and throwing money, nothing happened. But the first time I said, Jesus, he showed up. <laughs> I felt his power. I began to say, what kind of religion is this? What kind of uh, justice is this? And my mother said, no, Islam is good. These people make it look bad. And I began to read the Quran, the Hadith, and I saw, wow, so much evil in the Quran. Muhammad killed people. I saw Muhammad beheaded people, cut people's hand off. It says not to be friends with Jews and Christians, Surah 551. In Surah 929, Muhammad said, kill those who don't believe in Allah. This could not be from God. The, everything Jesus said is the message of love, forgiveness, um, the, the victory of life over death. The victory of love over hatred. Uh, and I saw that, that he's the savior, the redeemer. Look at the Quran, Muhammad, uh, he claimed to be a prophet when he was 40 years old. And he died when he was 63. So in 23 years of him claiming to be a prophet, his entire life is summed up in perversion, in violence, and war. So you see, look at Jesus. He never touched a sword. He never killed anyone. He never touched a woman in an improper way. He never started a war. And all his message was love. And he only taught for three and a half years. And he changed the world. Mm. When they say you're brainwashed for believing in Jesus, check this out. No one ever thought I was crazy until I came to Christ. I was never brainwashed for all the esoteric ideologies that I believed in or all the new age spiritual practices that I was engaged in. But when I started professing Christ as my Lord and Savior, then I was brainwashed. The irony with that is that all the other stuff that I was doing before, I was only doing because I thought it was a cool spiritual trend and it seemed to work for everyone else, so why not me? But nothing about Christianity ever actually appealed to me because it's not one of those things that's sold in the market as a self-healing tool. Speaking of brainwashing,
But that's the thing. No one talked me into this. No one convinced me of Jesus. It was Jesus himself that convinced me of Jesus. The Bible says that the carnal mind cannot perceive spiritual things. So when you have that supernatural revelation of God's love and it completely transforms your heart from the inside out, the carnal world literally cannot comprehend it. So through the lens of the spiritual blinders, they say you're brainwashed. When the truth is, it's the world that has been brainwashed into rejecting that love of Jesus. I spent 10 years in New Age spirituality and no one batted an eye, but when I came to Christ, everyone around me thought I lost my mind. When the reality is, I was actually of sound mind for the first time in my life. Because that's the truth of it. It's not that I was brainwashed, it's that I was washed clean. And that's my prayer for you watching this. If you think Christianity is crazy, please be honest with yourself and asking the question, do you have true joy? Because the joy of the Lord is real and it is my strength. And he died for you to have that too. Follow me for more Christian content. hates you. Keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. I'm about to make a lot of your life make sense, because once you see that demonic realm, you can't unsee it. There are people out there that are cursing your name, bitching about you, speaking ill about you, your family. There are people out there that are watching your social media day in, day out with nothing but hate. These demons latch onto you, whether you're aware of it or not. Even if you have an altercation in the street and piss someone off, they're cursing you. You know what happens when those demons start attacking? You start getting aches, pains, health issues, random accidents around the house. You can't concentrate on work. Your relationships start falling apart. You get bad dreams. You can feel an actual presence around you and in your house. This ain't a game. These demons are real. So you need to get on the armor of God. God, I armor up now with the helmet of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. I am spiritually equipped with the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith and the sword of spirit. You ask for the holy hedge of fire to surround you, your family and your household. No demonic thing can come against you and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Nothing is stronger than God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit's protection. And you need it because we are in a demonic war. Why do we feel guilty if God has forgiven our sins? The truth of the matter is if you're forgiven and you're genuinely converted, you feel worse about your sins than a non-believer does. Because now you have a new nature. Now the Lord has done a work in your life of converting you. You're not just justified, that is declared righteousness and covered forensically with the righteousness of Christ, but the Spirit of God has taken up residence in your heart. Your sensitivity to sin is more heightened than it's ever been in your entire life. I mean, look at the Apostle Paul, what does he say? I'm the chief of sinners, and you would say, whoa, you're an apostle. You're the guy teaching us all this theology. What do you mean you're the chief of sinners? Let me give you a simple principle. As you grow in Christ as a believer, you will sin less and feel worse. Why? Because as you sin less, you love righteousness more. And the more you love righteousness and the more you become like Christ, the more you hate sin. Just one more time. Come on, Josh, one more time wouldn't hurt. You can always try again tomorrow, for it is written. I am not controlled by my sinful nature. I am controlled by the Spirit. You're right, but this kind of thing takes time. You can't just go cold, Turk, for it is written. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> They're just words, Josh. For it is written, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You're not Jesus. He was perfect. He could resist, but you're just a human. You don't have the power to. It is written, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. We've heard this before, Josh. Let's be real. It is written, no temptation has overtaken me. The righteous fall seven times and rise again. Come on, man. God understands your struggle. After this, just repent and get back up. Submit yourselves. What are you doing? Therefore to God, you'll never be free from this. Resist the devil. You are not. You hear me? I owe you. And he will flee from you.